Hi, welcome to episode three of Pink's Picks, recommendations from a retired, that would be me, English teacher. The two coronavirus, oh, that'd be four, sorry. The two coronavirus titles that I'm going to discuss today are The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry and The Little Paris Bookshop. These have quite a few things in common. Both of these books are written by female authors. Nevertheless, they very convincingly, I think, I mean, I'm a chick, but I still think that they very convincingly uh, portray older male dynamic characters who undergo profound change physically, mentally, and emotionally. Both of these books are dedicated to the author's uh, deceased fathers, sadly, and both of the books begin with with maps. Uh, this one with a map of England and this with a map of Paris, which which those maps come in handy as you're reading the books. Um, both of them have plots that detail lengthy journeys. That's why they come in handy, those maps. Um, Harold's journey is by foot, and Jean, his journey is by boat and car. And both of these odysseys uh, begin in the spring and end in the fall. Both of these books feature very, very colorful characters who who not only do our protagonists enjoy meeting along the way, but we enjoy meeting them as well. Um, both of the books begin with a letter from a woman. And in both cases, this letter is the impetus for their journey, which is kind of cool. First, I'm going to talk about now alone, the, the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry. Rachel Joyce is uh, an, an award-winning British actress and playwright. Uh, Harold Fry is her first novel for which she won the UK's National Book Award for New Writer of the Year. This book has 320 pages and 32 titled chapters. They're very cleverly titled, uh, Howard and the Garage Girl and a Question of Faith. That's just cute. It's just cute. I love the opening sentences of this book. The letter that would change everything arrived on a Tuesday. It was an ordinary morning in mid-April that smelled of clean washing and grass cuttings. Harold Fry sat at the breakfast table, freshly shaved in a clean shirt and tie with a slice of toast that he wasn't eating. He gazed beyond the kitchen window at the clipped lawn, which was spiked in the middle by Maureen's telescopic washing line and trapped on all three sides by the neighbor's stockade fencing. Harold, called Maureen above the vacuum cleaner post. He thought he might like to go out. But the only thing to do was mow the lawn, and he had done that yesterday. The vacuum tumbled into silence, and his wife appeared, looking cross with the letter. She sat opposite Harold. This letter is from Queenie Hennessy, who is a former colleague of Harold's, and she's now in hospice care. After deep deliberation, Harold writes her back, but instead of dropping that letter in the mailbox, he decides that he's going to deliver the letter in person, so he starts walking, and he ends up walking the entire length of England. At one point in his journey, uh, Joyce says, without money, phone, or maps, Harold was proving himself a hero for the 21st century. That's because different people along the way get wind of his journey, that he's going to see this woman in hospice care, and he becomes somewhat of a celebrity. Think uh, Forrest Gump when he goes on the run, when he keeps running and running and running. Uh, this book begins with an epigraph from Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress, and this too is part Christian allegory. Um, 
Mostly, though, it's just a, a charming, sometimes bittersweet adventure. And as the reader, it was just fun to, to, to join Harold on this trip. I give this book not only an A, but an A+, plus because it's, it's just really clever. Uh, the second book is, again, The Little Paris Bookshop. This is Nina George's 26th book. Uh, she wrote it originally in German, so this is in translation. It became a bestseller in Germany, Italy, Poland, and the Netherlands. Jean Perdue's bookshop is a literary apothecary housed on a barge on the Seine. Uh, he, pres he prescribes books to his customers saying that, that books not only heal people, they make us happy. Um, they, they, some books are long that, that he compares to a, a long, beautiful, lifelong romance. And then others, and this is the same way I've described books before too. Probably that's why I liked it. Uh, you know, some are a marriage, some are a date and so on and so forth. So, I like the way he describes books. I like the idea that books can heal because as readers, we, we know that they can. Um, I loved the very narration, uh, third person limited letters, diaries, postcards, and interior monologue. I love the vivid descriptions. Uh, Jean describes one of the characters that, that he meets uh, as looking like she just stepped out of a Bruegel painting. And for any of you who are familiar with that artist, that, that's just funny. Uh, I love the allusions to The Sun Also Rises, uh, The Catcher in the Rye, extremely loud and incredibly close. Um, I love that at the back, there are recipes that are published in here. One of the characters uh, that Jean ends up traveling with is another fellow writer, but he's also an excellent cook and his favorite cuisine is from Provence. And so those recipes are included in the back of the book. Also in the back of the book is Jean Perdue's Literary Emergency Pharmacy. And if we look back here, he would prescribe Mark Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer to overcome adult worries and rediscover the child within. I love this book. I, I think it's just absolutely precious and I give this to an A+. Next time, I am going to be discussing the controversial American Dirt by Janine Cummins. Until then, Stay safe, stay healthy, and do your homework.